We know that it's the commonest aortic emergency. 20 to 30 percent die before they get to hospital. The management of type B dissection is much more dynamic. For type A, it's very clear. If you're fit enough, you go to theatre and you have an operation. The definition of uncomplicated type B, I've sort of covered in the previous talk, but you, you can't have a, anything that needs immediate treatment. And so what, for me, composes best medical therapy? So it was touched on yesterday, but I think rapid diagnosis, we have a problem in the UK in diagnosing dissection. Whilst we talk about it at medical school, and it is definitely one of the differential diagnoses of chest pain, it seems that once you become a junior doctor and you're in A&E, you forget because you think everybody's having an MI or pulmonary embolus. Getting the right imaging, again, not as easy as you think. Um, people don't image or do CT out of hours in certain places, which makes it tricky. The first and most important thing is giving the patient analgesia. If they're in pain, they will have a higher blood pressure than they should. I'm going to talk more about blood pressure management in a minute, but the other thing that I think is important is getting them to a place of safety. And that, for me, is a cardiovascular center with a level two or level three bed with a specialist team of vascular, cardiac, IR, critical care, hypertensive te hypertension team if need be, renal team, to manage their blood pressure and really optimize their medical treatment. And you want tight control of their heart rate and blood pressure control, and you want an imaging protocol. Um, the aim of your medical treatment is to stabilize that dissection flap to prevent malperfusion, reduce pain, and prevent early death. Um, and you do that by decreasing their systolic blood pressure and heart rate. And you do that because you decrease the impulse wave that comes out of the heart and you control the ventricular contraction force, which is the DP-DT ratio. Wheaton Palmer, who did the original sort of medical management, showed that very clearly. Um, and they showed that if you control people's blood pressure, they did much better and it's not rocket science. So what is DPDT? I talk to my registrars about this all the time. It's the rate that the left ventricle pressure rises in early systole, and it's one of the oldest measures of left ventricular contractility. And it, it represents the steepness of the pulse wave, and the best medicines for sorting that out are beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. And so this is the regime I use for blood pressure management. My aim is to get the heart rate below 60 and the systolic blood pressure ideally below 100, but you often have to titrate that against renal function. So I use labetalol as a first line. If the hypertension persists despite high rates of labetalol, I use nicardipine. And if tachycardia persists, then we can use esmolol and diltiazem, but you very rarely have to do that. I just want to put a cautionary note out there about GTN. I see lots of patients transferred on GTN infusions because people are scared of using beta blockers. Um, please note that this actually increases your DPDT ratio by a quarter, and you rapidly get tachyphylaxis to it, so it doesn't work anyway. So please do not use it in aortic dissection. It's actually harmful. Um, we want to decrease the blood pressure because we want to prevent them being a rapid expander, but we know that there are risk factors for aortic growth and they're listed on this slide. Um, and so we're always looking to see if the aortic di diameter is greater than 40 millimetres, whether the false lumen is greater than 22 millimetres, whether they've got a large entry tear, whether the, patent, the, whether the false lumen is still patent. How do we do that? We do regular repeat imaging so they become they're admitted they have their initial ct that makes the diagnosis and then they have a repeat ct scan at 48 hours after admission even if they haven't had any new symptoms because dissection is a dynamic process and you need to see how it's changing if they remain stable on best medical therapy we will repeat it prior to discharge or after a week and then we repeat it at one month, three months, six months, and a year during that first year, because that is the biggest risk factor period. In summary, I think the best medical therapy for acute type B aortic dissection is really important. We spend a lot of time talking about all the very exciting interventions that we can do, but you have to get the medical therapy right. And good blood pressure control and heart rate control, we know, improves prognosis. 
And so I'm going to leave all the other speakers in the session to tell me about the next part of the story for type B aortic section, which is the really interesting, controversial bit. Thank you very much.